Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the new release of Duic Tools version 14. If you wanted to get into the script in the past and just haven't got around to it because of lack of tutorials or just kind of difficulty using it, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to get started and doing some great character animations. Now, first off, if you don't have the script, you can get it here at doodoof.net. That's D-U-D-U-F dot net. You can see it right here up on the screen. And you can just download it. It's version 14. It's brand new. And this is donationware. So if you find this script useful, which you will, because it's really awesome, please consider donating and uh, just supporting the artist and the author of this so that he can create better updates and more scripts like this in the future. So if you want to see how to install this script, then stick around to the end and I'll show you how to install it. I'm gonna just jump right into it right now. So here I have this character, Mr. Baldy. You might have seen him in a previous video of mine. And this is a perfect character for demonstrating the power of Duic Tools because it's so versatile. I have, it's not a full um, rigged up character. I don't have a piece for his hand and his forearm and his arm. Um, and for his legs, the, the legs, as you can see here, it's just one piece. And so I've got, you can see head, body, left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg. So I'm going to have to do a mix of some bones with the puppet tool and some traditional parenting type things. So Duic Tools is really great for this. This might be a little bit of a longer tutorial. I'm going to be very detailed because this is a little bit tricky how it works. But once it's all together, it's really great. So first thing I'm going to need to do is make sure that some of my layers are named right. And so there's a new feature called Auto Rig, and it and Auto Rigs it based on actual layer names. So you can see here, head, neck, body, pelvis, L arm for left arm, L forearm, L hand, and same thing with the right. And then for the legs, it's thigh, calf, and foot. And then there's, you know, the capital R, space, and then you spell it out. So what I have here is similar. So I need to make sure that I rename everything the right way. But I can't do that quite yet because the only thing that I can name that way is the head. Everything else, I actually have multiple pieces in one, and I'm going to need to use the puppet tool. So to start off, I'm just going to take the head, and I'm going to lock that because it's good. Now let's go to the body. If I look here on what we need, we need a neck and we need a pelvis. So I'm going to put two puppet pin tool points right in it. So I'm going to grab the puppet pin, put one up here by the neck, put one by the pelvis. Now I need to come in here to these pins and I'm going to turn them into bones. So let's start at puppet pin one. And then I'm just going to click on the bone, and it puts up a null object there. Click on two, and bone. Now I need to name these the correct name. So this, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to call it neck, and this one was pelvis. Okay, and that's it for the body. Now I need to go on, let's do the left arm. This one's going to need three pins. One up here by the shoulder, one here in the elbow, one by the wrist. Let's go back down into these puppet pins. So the first one, which is shoulder, click bone, second one, third one. Let's go ahead and close this down. So this one is going to be, if we look here, that's just called left arm, then left forearm, and then left hand. So let's label these. And labeling these is going to make it so much easier in the end. So that's left arm. Let's go to the right arm. And I'm just going to continue through doing this, um, making sure I label everything the same. And I'm probably going to speed through this just so um, that it doesn't take forever. Okay, so I've got these all made, all these bones. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide all of these other parts, the, um, except for the, 
the head, which I have locked here. So I'm going to take the body, the arm, all these, highlight them all, and turn on the little shy guy. Let's go ahead and hide those because we don't need to look at them right now. Now, I do have to tell you that you got to make sure that you rename these bones after every time I do this. So I did the arm, and then I renamed them, then I did the other arm. If I were to make all of the bones first, it would get all messed up because it would end up naming these uh, null objects the same thing, and then everything that's linked to it would get all weird. So you need to rename them before you move on to the next layer. Just a little side note. Now that we have all these bones made and labeled correctly, we're ready to auto rig. So make sure nothing is selected. Hit auto rig. This pops up and see, because I labeled everything correctly, it go, it went ahead and stuck everything right where it needs to go. Now, um, that says cancel, just so you know, but I'm gonna click on okay. And then everything is thinking and it's, there it is, it's auto rigged. And you can see there's a little bit of weirdness going on here. So if I just click on this hand, there's going to be some new controls. And I want to, right here where it's IK, FK, I can change that. Or the IK orientation. And then here I have some inverse kinematics. And it's working pretty good. Now I might want to come in here. I'm going to actually move some of these um, joints. See, it puts little null objects right where you need them. So these bigger ones are going to be the controllers. And then the smaller ones are actually the points, like the puppet points for the arms and the legs. So now I've got this cool little guy. And I can I can switch things around. So say I want this leg to be bending the other way. Well, I click on this controller and this IK orientation. I change it. So now he's doing kind of a weird, crazy dance. And I can make these controllers a little bigger just so they're easier to grab. Okay, so that is how to rig up a character with Duic tools. Pretty easy. Now let's do one where we're not using the auto rig. So let's grab a new composition. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring in some quick shapes. Make them all on new layers. And we're making kind of like a robot arm thing going on. And let's label these. This would be the hand. That would be the forearm. The arm. And then the body. Put these in the right order. Okay. Now we need to make sure the anchor point's in the right spot. In which they need to be right where the joint is. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard, which is my pan behind tool. Move the anchor point. Select this guy, move the anchor point, and do that with all of them. And the body you don't really have to worry about. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to pick which one is going to be my controller. And with inverse kinematics, I want the hand to be the controller. So I'm going to click on that, hit controller. Now I need to parent these together. So the hand will be parented to the forearm, the forearm to the arm, and the arm to the body. Now I need to select these in the right order, which is the hand, then the forearm, then the arm, don't select the body, then the controller, hit IK, brings up this option, and click OK. And you can see here, we've got this kind of cool little arm going on. And I can change the direction, say I want this to angle down, well I can just check this box right here. So this is kind of a cool thing. And then also there's a new feature where it kind of stretches out. 
So it kind of looks like it's on elastic, elastic, so that can be a cool feature as well. So this is just a basic um, inverse kinematics if you aren't using the auto rig. So let's talk about some of the other features that there is in this script, because it's not just all about IK. There's some cool animation features. So I want to talk about just a couple of my favorite ones. So let's go ahead and just delete all of this. And let's do a quick animation. So I'm going to grab just a square. And what I want to do is I'm going to start it. Let's keyframe the position. Let's bring it right over here. Let's make that even faster. So there's a quick movement. And what I can do is I can add some spring to this movement. So if I just select the position and then hit this button that says spring, it's going to automatically add a couple of sliders and an expression to it. And you can see it adds a little bit of spring to it. I can change the elasticity so it's a lot tighter, a little bit more dampening. So there's just a little bit. Let's bring the dampening maybe about to 10. That's pretty good. And you can see it's actually doing quite a bit. Let me open up this expression. You can see all that has been written in here. So it's a lot more than what I want to remember. So that's the spring. It makes things look pretty natural. Next, a personal favorite of mine is wiggle. So if you're doing lots of uh, wiggling things, it's really easy to do the wiggle expression and even attaching some controllers to it. But he's got a built-in right here. I can just come in here, select the layer, hit wiggle. Brings up this little dialog box. Do I want to wiggle the position, which axis, um, the scale, rotation, opacity. So say I just want to rot you know, position in the x-axis, I can do that. And it automatically puts in my sliders. And it's going to wiggle just in the one direction. So that's pretty cool. And the last thing I want to show you is actually really thin, really neat. It's called the Morpher. And I don't know exactly what its main purposes are for. But what I like is what you can do with it is it's basically you can keyframe very complex animations. So I'm going to do a simple complex complex animation. So we have a square. I'm going to come to rotation. And let's do a complete rotation. Then let's go to scale. Let's actually do all of these. Scale, opacity, anchor point, position. And it's going to do kind of this crazy animation. Now, if I wanted to keyframe these and change all these separately, it would be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to make this so it's the full length of the frame. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these. I'm going to hit this morpher. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create a slider that is going to control this. So let's go into this effects, into this morpher. And I can actually turn this off. And when that is off and there's no keyframes, there's no animation. And as I slide through this, it's sliding through all of those animations that I did based on the slider. So this one slider is controlling everything, even in time. So let's go in. Give it a keyframe. Go all the way up to 100. Go back down. And you can see now I've taken this whole animation and basically copied it and I can speed it up and recall it at any time I want to. So let's go in here again. Let's make a keyframe one from zero up to say 75 this time, then down to 50, then all the way up to 100. And it's kind of a really cool way of doing some animations where if you've got an animation you want set and then you can come in and tweak it like crazy. So that's the morpher. So that is not all of the stuff that's in the Duic tools. So I highly encourage you to download it, um, donate to the cause, and uh, check out all of the cool things you can do with it. But the thing that most people use it for is this rigging and the IK tools. That's a part of it.
And so hopefully you learned a lot about that. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and then I hopefully can answer it for you. So if you've stuck around this long and are wondering how to install this, that's what it's time for now, is how to install the script into After Effects. So when you download it, it comes in a folder called Duic 14. And you simply, it's really simple to install this, you just place this, all the contents of the folder, into the script UI panels. So on a Mac, it's in the After Effects CC, scripts, scripts UI panels. And you can see these three, I'll highlight them for you, are the three that come into that folder. And so I just copied them here into the script UI panels. And then when I relaunch After Effects, it's open. And you can access this in the window. You can see down here it says Duic. If I undo that, it's gone. Open that back up again. Click it. It's going to pop open. And I can actually move this, have it docked anywhere. It's a dockable um, UI panel. So it's pretty neat. So that's how to install it. Really simple. You just need to find that. Now, if you're on Windows, I'm not sure exactly um, where it's located, but it's probably something very similar. So just go to your After Effects folders, and there should be a script file in there. And uh, stick it in that script folder. It's script UI panels. And just all three of them, just throw them right in there. And then when you reset After Effects, everything should work just fine. So hopefully you learned a lot. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.